How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Bellingwold. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Welcome to the village of Bellingwold. This village is a village in the municipality of the Westerworld, Netherlands. It is located in the southeast of the Ombat region and is in the north of the Westerworld region and in the east of the province of Groningen on the border with Germany. It was inspired by the village structure. There are 58 fields, one small BGA, one main farm, one small farm. There is a land of uh, land for animals. It is a land where animals such as sheep, cows, pigs, and chickens live. This map has quite a few required mods, starting with the old farm package by DMI 20mm Normandy, the garage with sliding doors by 750ti modding and Mikhail LS, Pack of Small Buildings by Leo Leo, Metal Shed by Simulator Games, Brick Building by Azizus, Aziz Azizus, Azizic, hmm. Garage for Machines by Didact96, Garage with Silo by Mr. Grun Grunka, Grun Grucha, Mr. Grucha, Garage with Silo by Nulu, Metal Shed by, ooh, uh, P3LIKAN, Pil Pilican, Old Storage Shed by Black Sheep Modding, Barn with Chicken Coop by Leo Leo, Cow Barn 17x14 by Paisel, Small Building Pack by RQ, Farm Buildings with Cows by Cormir, Brick Shed with Barn by Grecus, Old Farm Building Set by Ragit G Play, Big Garage by Raider, and Metal Shed by Camelos 09. 0397. This map was created by AE Mapping and is 95.15 megabytes to download. If we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. If I fully expand it out, you'll see that this is a very condensed map and it does not utilize the full 2x2 two two, um, map card. <clears throat> we start out here on the southern portion, almost dead center of the playable area of the map at our main starting farm. You cannot purchase all areas of the map. As you can see, there are plenty of areas that are not purchasable, including the shop areas and some of the sell points. Values do vary throughout the map, but the prices are rather inflated because a lot of the multiple fields are combined. So starting off here, 11,000, 36,000, we got 28,000, we got a grass field here for 75, 86,000, but that's what, five fields all put together, 67, 170, but again, you got three fields plus a pretty big grassland right here. Uh, you've got uh, 72, 14, 19, and so on and so forth. So you do get a wide range, but if you take a look, you only start out with your starting farm. That's it. You don't have any land, so you have to purchase something right away or work on contracts to then be able to save and store up for your next purchase. So... It's going to be kind of a trade-off on how you want to proceed, but it's nice because it gives you that option of how do you want to proceed. Do you want to start out with animals? Do you want to start out with farming? Do you want to start out with the, I think there's bits of forestry that you can do around here. You start out by owning farmland number one, like I said before, and that is the main starting farm. Uh, let's see. You do start out with being able to use the animal pens, but you do not own the land that the animal pens are established on. Uh, contracts are available on this map, no production change on this to start out with, and no contracts. If we take a look at mods specific to this map, just going through the buy menu, there's no mod and DLC tab, so there's no mod specific under the buy menu, but under the build mode, there's nothing under buildings, productions, animals, or decorations. No mods specific to this map. Now you will see, if you scroll over to the right here, you will see the mods required for this map, but those are different than mods specific to this map. Mods specific to this map will show here on this screen under the map name itself. But if we go all the way to landscaping, we do get a couple of additional uh, painting swatches here, but nothing uh, else under trees or plants. Now, because we start here at the starting farm, let's go ahead and take a look at the starting equipment. Under the buy menu, scrolling down to the owned items, small tractors will have a Massey Ferguson 5S135 and a 4710M, and we also have the Buer 6105. 
Under Harvesters, we have the top uh, Deutz Far Top Liner 4090H. Trailers, we have a Welger DK115 and a Salek ANS1900. Header for the Deutz Far. Plows, we have the Pottinger Servo 25. Cultivators, the Raby EG39. Cedars, the Nordstein HK25 and S3030. And Planters, the Agramaz Falcon 3 uh, Planter. And that is it. That's all we have to start out with. So we don't have any fields. We don't have a, a lot of equipment. So you're going to have to very, very strategically utilize your 100,000 to start out with on new farmer mode in order to be able to expand your operations. Now, this is our starting farm here. Lots of storage, not much in the ways of anything else, but if we open this door real quick, over here we do have a silo. We have our input right here and our output right there. You can see a little tube coming out for the output. Uh, oh, I just noticed there's a little marker. Oh, it's for lights. Okay, nice. And then the other kind of highlight of your main farm is right here. We have a wardrobe trigger and hop over that, a sleep trigger. And that's it. Like I said, pretty much the rest of this is just storage. It's not uh, too much in the way of doing too much around here. So I'm going to grab this uh, little Massey here. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say that it's really hard to kind of navigate on this map because of the lack of defined roads on the map, uh, like the map screen on the bottom. And it is very, very tight and narrow, as you can see. We got just a little over, you know, the tractor's width in, uh, tractor's width in able to make our turns and do everything around that. So over here, we have... Whoop, I open that a cow barn room for 15 cows here now again you do have access to these you can as you can see you got all the triggers everything's up here but you do not own the land so if we take a look at the map we just came from our main farm here up to about here and then there's a little two track that runs along here that gets us into the uh, kind of secondary farm per se now Let's see. To purchase this with all the animals, it's $33,000. Not too terribly expensive, but again, you're going to have a hard time getting money. Uh, because contracts are not that expensive. If we take a look at the contract stream real quick, $273 for fertilizing field one, $243. Like, it's nothing. It's nothing. These are extremely tiny fields, extremely tiny stuff, so you're not going to be able to ramp up money very quickly. It's going to be lots of small equipment on this map. So you have your slurry output there, you have your feed input right here, and milk right here. Again, some more storage in here, which is nice. Across the way here we have our pig barn. Oops, there it is, room for 15 pigs. Water and feed go in here, and slurry comes out here. Now, it says in the description that there's supposed to be sheep. Now I presume, and actually here, let's let's not even presume. Let's let's go ahead and buy this. Yep, that's exactly it. So sheep barn right here, room for 25. We have feed that goes here, wool is produced here. So you have to buy the land here in order to get your sheep barn up and running. But you do have access to the cows, pigs, and chickens otherwise. More storage, more, more storage. And right over here, we have the chicken barn, room for 50 chickens. We have our feed goes in there. And where does the eggs come out? That's something I forgot to look for. Um, huh. I am unsure where the eggs spawn. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be something to find out. Uh, water trigger right there. And that's it. That is it for this particular area. Now let's go ahead and grab the tractor and start heading out. We're going to backtrack. Head back towards, whoa, head back towards the farm. 
And right before we go into it, we're going to make a left and then follow this all the way out to that big building structure in front of us. That is our next destination. So as we continue to follow this, you'll see very, very small fields. You're going to be able to get a lot of things accomplished around here. You're going to be able to do harvest quick. You're going to be able to fertilize quick. You're going to be able to do everything very, very quickly. It's just not with a lot of big equipment. And you're really going to have struggle trying to get from one thing to the next to the next money wise. Because you're not going to be making a lot. So this is the mill. You can purchase for $96,000. Inputs here and outputs just over here. All right, so we'll go ahead and head out of here. And go to the next point of interest. Come out of here and pull into the main shop area where you can see the shop trigger directly in front of us and repair trigger right here we'll turn around and head back out right next door to the spinnery stop there you can purchase spinnery for sixty thousand input is here and that does not have a clearly defined output i have ran around this whole building to see if maybe there's some doors or something that can be opened i cannot find anything to indicate where an output would be and as you can see no hash marks no nothing i'm gonna guess that maybe somewhere in this area is where it will start producing the pallets but that's just a guess Directly in front of me to my right is the gas station. We're going to pull in this way. And we're just going to continue to follow these two tracks around to our next point of interest. And then up here, we're going to make a right. Again, trying to be careful because it's pretty narrow. Following it this way, we now reach the biogas plant. We pull in here. And right here, we have the purchase point for 504,140. It is going to take a long time to scrimp and save to get this uh, particular piece of property. Solid inputs here, liquid inputs right behind me, and the outputs for liquids, aka digestate, right there. Couple of bunker silos in the back. And now we're gonna head back and turn right where we came in from. Going all the way down to the main road. Actually, um, you can see right over in the distance there, that set of buildings there between the two sets of trees, that's the small farm, quote unquote, if we take a look at the map and show where we've been up to this point. I think we left off here at the animal uh, kind of farm here we then came back out to this main driveway to our farm then went all the way out to the mill here came all the way up saw the shop trigger repair trigger we went over to the spinnery which is a production point but for some reason showing as a sell point uh, we passed by the gas station came up and around up to here out to the biogas plant then back down to here, but we're looking off at this place. Farmland number three, 19,440. This is the second farm that the description speaks of. And this is just storage. You can see I went ahead and bought this, but for some reason, I can't sell it back. Well, not for some reason. I can't sell it back because there are uh, buildings on it. But you can see this is the plot I'm talking about. It's just a couple of storage buildings, nothing in particular, no silos, no nothing like that. So we'll go ahead and just drive past that 
and move on to the next point of interest. Following the main road out to the west, Now, coming up to my right is the supermarket sell point. We'll pull in here, and it's just in the back right here. And see, that's the sell point. And just follow this back around. Continue to follow this out to the right. here we'll make a left and take this all the way back here to the sawmill so pull in right here and buy the sawmill for a hundred thousand dollars we have our output our input with a wood cell trigger right there and our output for our wood chips is just over there Now we'll head up to our last point of interest. Taking this all the way back out to here. And just behind that set of trees there is the point of interest. We just got to follow this all the way out because that's where the two track takes us. So it's not the most direct line to get from place to place, but it is what it is. Make a left right here. Followed by another left. And directly in front of me is the animal dealer. Now you can go to this location here using this icon to purchase your animals directly. You can also purchase your animals directly using the same icon at the pens and pastures that are already installed onto the map. If you use this icon directly though, you will incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. So if I go up to it and click on it, go ahead and looking at cows, you'll see baby cows here, the baby brown Swiss is $50 per cow. Mid-ranged aged cows are $80 and adult cows are $100 per cow. That gets expensive pretty quickly. Now, because our barns and buildings are rather small on this map, it's not going to be too much. It's going to be, what, $1,500 if you get all 15 cows, uh, adults. It's not that bad, but if you want to save that money, instead of having the animal dealer do the work for you and take it over to your animal de or, or animal pen or pasture for you, you can come to this location with an animal trailer, pull into the hash marks here, use this icon to click on it, and then buy the animals for your trailer. It'll load directly into that, and then you deliver the animals to your pen and pasture yourself. And it saves you that money. And over time on this map, in particular it's gonna save you money quite a bit but again for 15 cows and them being adults it's not gonna add up too quickly now right here we have the animal dealer sell point and that is it that is everything for the Bellingwald map now it is time to render my opinion and let you know what I think zero to five scale as per usual I am going to come right out and say it. I'm not a huge fan of this map I'm not really crazy about it. Now, what I will say, color palette is very nice. I like the color palette. I even kind of like the layout for the most part, but the map is very hard to follow. When I'm kind of wa wandering around on this map, you have to be aware of where the roads are and pay attention and all that stuff because they're not very clearly defined, specifically these two tracks and these kind of side roads. They're not very well marked on the map itself. And it makes it difficult to be able to find where to turn and where to go to from, you know, from area to area kind of thing. Um, this is that secondary farm, by the way, is right there. Just just a little bit of storage, but nothing special. But uh, 
yeah the color palette's nice you're very much kind of enclosed and surrounded by trees you're kind of encased in this kind of mountain range around here which is nice it's a very lovely map the map itself is extremely flat um, the entire playing surface is flat. There's very little room to grow on this map as best as I can tell. There is some forestry to do. There is some expansion in that, but you can't go too far out into the woods. So if we just go ahead and go out into the woods, you'll see exactly where it cuts us off. And anything that uh, hits before the end here is stuff that you can't expand into. Oh, actually, this goes out really far. Can you really get out this... Oh, there's the cutoff. Okay. So you can get all these trees and you can really expand it out to actually quite a big degree. You can see just how far out I am. So you do have access to all. Oh, actually, you don't because you can't own this property. So, yeah, you can't cut down the trees or nothing. So, yeah, that's kind of a mark against it as well. Um, I don't know. Being able to be out here and not being able to do anything with all this grass, with all these trees, that's kind of a bummer. That's a big... Uh, mark against it in my book um so really all these trees are meant for is what happened oh there's a tree right there the trees are really only meant for decoration and and not really utilization in, in this particular section but uh yeah just not my cup of tea there's a lot of limitations and restrictions that are built into this map because of not being able to own things not being able to uh to do much with the areas itself the farms i'm not really crazy about either because you're starting out with just the farm you don't have any actual land to to utilize now that does make it to where you can kind of expand your abilities to where you're going to go are you going to be a you know animal farmer are you going to be a uh you know, arables, are you going to be whatever? You, you can be whatever you want. And that's kind of a nice thing about this. The one thing I will say that is another kind of annoyance is in these grass fields that we have access to, you can see this one in particular, 60, uh, 35 here, has rocks in the middle of them. So if you have missions or anything dealing with these, you're going to have to just kind of come around these and, and actually just cut your grass around them. It's kind of a, a small annoyance to me. Now, it is nice. It's decorative and all that stuff. And that's probably would be kind of indicative to real life, but not um, something I would be looking forward to having to work around in game kind of thing but i mean it is what it is it's not the the worst thing in the world um but yeah just the kind of general layout of the area is i'm just i'm just not feeling it just like i said if this was you know something that you could like be able to expand and build and grow but there's really not that much room to expand build or grow there's only like the kind of predefined area and that's really about it so I feel like this is going to be a very limited in the scope uh, that you can do on this map. So it, it's kind of a bummer. And you get this, it's a relatively large starting farm. You get a lot of storage, a lot of kind of area to be able to, you know, do stuff in. But with that being said, there's not really much use for all this space per se. And one thing that just... I think I just noticed. Uh, nope. I thought I saw a repair trigger and I thought I passed right by it, but apparently I didn't. But no, all, all in all, it's just this isn't my cup of tea. Now, this would be a very good introductory map if you're trying to get somebody kind of used to the game and all that stuff. It's, it's going to be hard in one aspect because there's going to be, you know, the the tight spaces and stuff people are trying to work around tight spaces and stuff but with everything being so so flat and so squared off and all that stuff it's going to be easy to be able to to set somebody up and let them kind of go about their their business kind of thing but yeah all in all just i don't know i feel like it's it's lacking you know like i said it just very flat very square very kind of basic for lack of a better word so not my cup of tea so what would i give this map zero to five scale as per usual i would probably give this map probably a one 
And again, I don't give a poor rating because of, you know, ill intent or anything like that. I don't have anything against the map or the map maker or anything like that. It's one of those that this is just, you know, constructive criticism. This is my own personal feelings, nothing more. And it's just one of those that when I score this map, this is how I feel about it. So it's one of those... A one is what I personally feel that this map deserves. And it's not to the, say the map is bad. This map is going to have many fans for for their own reasons. Just like I'm not a fan for my own reasons, as I've tried to lay out here. But all in all, just not my cup of tea. So that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this map tour. If you did, please show them by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things that you the doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said i hope you have a fantastic day take care